All right, guys, Josh Rubin here from East West Healing. Today, I want to talk to you about SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, what I like to call stress-induced bacterial overgrowth. But before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit that notification button so we send out these weekly YouTubes. You get that notification. And to support us, don't forget to like this video. So let's jump right in. This is just food for thought. This isn't medical advice. This isn't a treatment plan. But SIBO is sweeping the nation, right? 10, 15 years ago, we really never saw this. Where is it coming from? Why does everyone have a bacterial overgrowth in their small intestine, right? And why is the recommendation to take antibiotics to kill this bacteria or go on a FODMAT diet and be restricted in prison for the rest of your life. And anytime you venture out of that, all your symptoms come back. So we really have to look at that and say, is it really a treatment plan? Or is it really just to help you kind of manage the symptoms and treat the symptoms, but really not live and thrive in everyday life? Because most people that we talk to that are eating this diet, it's not enjoyable, you feel imprisoned, you can't, you can't go out to eat, you can't do the things you wanna do. Where is this coming from? Well, we believe, meaning me and my wife at East West Healing, that it's stress-induced over time. And when we look at what stress really is, stress means the demands being placed on the individual exceed what the individual can handle. Now, everyone has a different history, right? Some of us had childhood trauma, traumatic births. Some of us overate, some of us underate, some of us overworked, underworked, overtrained, undertrained. The list goes on. Let's say you're 45 years old, 40 years old, 55, doesn't matter. From zero to now, you are a summation of all that, right? Whether it's stress or not stress, you're a summation. We really have to look at it and say, how much did I deposit into my bank account over the past 20, 30, 40 years? And how much did I withdraw? And for most of us, we're living and eating paycheck to paycheck, right? And... We're living beyond our means. We're withdrawing more money than we're putting in our bank account. Essentially, we're writing checks that our body can't cash. And this is why a lot of people all of a sudden now in their 20s and 30s are, I have an autoimmune disease, right? No matter what it is, it doesn't matter. They're all the same. Autoimmune disease, Hashimoto's, fibromyalgia, interstitial cystitis, right? But this is why we're seeing the sweep of SIBO. It is stress induced. Now, when we look at the bacteria in the small intestine, this is where you absorb most of your nutrients, right? It is regulated and, and guarded by hydrochloric acid in the stomach, right? Hydrochloric acid not only breaks down protein, it serves many purposes, but a huge piece of hydrochloric acid is it's a big piece to your immune system, right? So anytime you see hydrochloric acid drop, and we used to do tests for this back in the day with GI tests, and I don't think we found one person with normal amounts of hydrochloric acid, normal amounts of Sig A after hundreds of labs. Why? Because people are chronically stressed. We're living beyond our means. We're eating beyond our means. And most people are dieting. We're under eating. We're doing high fat diet, low fat diets. The list goes on. These diets don't support us because the main goal of a diet is short term, and it's usually to lose weight. Let's be honest, it's to lose weight. So when we look at this, not just dieting, life in general, we're living beyond our means, right? The energy that's coming in doesn't support the demands that are being placed on the system. This means over time, yeah, maybe when we're 10, 20, we're feeling good, we, we're born with all this money in the bank account, but over time we keep spending, now we're a million dollars in debt. So anytime there's stress in the system, you're naturally gonna see an ebb and flow in gastric juices and hormones, et cetera. But once we get on the roller coaster, we go through the, <gasps> the ups and downs, the stress, heart rate goes up, all these different things, you feel it in your stomach, right? But then you get off and you regulate. That is what life should be. We should be able to auto-regulate, we should be able to adapt. That builds our resiliency. The problem is most of us get on the roller coaster, <gasps> ooh, but we never get off. We've been on it for the past five, 10, 15 years. That is called chronic stress, my friends. Well, chronic stress wastes energy. 
And the more chronically stressed we are, the more energy we need. The problem is we're living in a society that's afraid of food. We're afraid of food. Working out is more important. Working is more important. And when we focus on food, we strangle it to death, trying so many different diets because we think that food alone is going to heal us. It's not. How we live and the habits that we change and the healthy habits that we create are. So anytime we have this chronic stress, a lot of things are happening, of course. We're not going to talk about them but because we're talking about the gut. But one thing that happens is you're going to see a, a suppression in the immune system. What comes with that is a decrease in hydrochloric acid. Why? Because the body's on the roller coaster. The body is adapting. It's saying, I need to live. I need to survive. And the only way to do that is to move everything to the periphery, the arms, the legs, the eyes, become hypervigilant. So you can run from that lion so you can be on the roller coaster. Because when you're on a roller coaster, you're not thinking about eating food. You're not thinking about pooping. You're not thinking about procreating. You are thinking about the, the ups and downs of the roller coaster, just like our biology books use running from a lion, right? Same analogy. So you're going to see that drop in hydrochloric acid. When you see that drop in hydrochloric acid, now your small intestine is at risk. It's at risk for food particles coming in that we don't break down. It's coming, it's at risk for a decrease in conversion of thyroid hormone. And this is important because thyroid hormone regulates GI mobility and GI motility. So now things are gonna come in, they're not gonna move. It, it opens the door for more bad bacteria, let's call it, to come in from putrefaction and fermentation and less good bacteria. And this is the recipe for SIBO. This is why the diet just keeps you here in the comfort zone. This is why the antibiotics don't work. Why? Because what got you here has not changed. It's still there. You're still on the roller coaster. So you've opened the door for all this imbalance, let's call it an imbalance in bacteria now. And this is why the supplement regimens and the diets and the imprisonment don't work. On top of this, remember, I called it stress-induced. Now, when we look at what stress really is, it's what's happening in the cell, okay? Your cells are either using oxygen efficiently because of copper, they're getting thyroid hormone, they're getting minerals, they're getting some glucose, and they're producing energy, which is CO2, ATP, and water, and copper-rich antioxidants like cytochrome oxidase and superoxide dismutase. This is a healing environment, right? This allows your mitochondria to communicate. You produce more mitochondrial biogenesis. You become more metabolic. You're putting money in the bank. You're saving money. You put money in your IRA, your 401k, whatever those things are. You're saving money long term. You go to spend money. It's not a stress. Why? Because you've got money in your bank account and you're still making money. That's where we want to be. But if you're not living in a way and eating a way to produce energy at the cell level, which we see through some blood tests, thyroid panels, and body temperature and pulse, as well as how you feel, you're producing energy. I'm sorry, you're producing exhaust, which is basically prooxidants, cytokines, prostaglandins, all these big words, right? You're producing calcification and inflammation. It's like you throw a, a fire, I'm sorry, you throw a, a match in a forest, and you see this little thing burn, right? That's when you start producing inflammation and you start going down that stress route. But before you know it, now we have the whole mountain range and the whole forest is on fire. This is the place where most people are at when it comes to SIBO. This is a problem because number one, we know how it's going to affect hydrochloric acid, how it's going to affect the gut bacteria, how it's going to affect T3. So now we're not regulating mobility and motility and things to sit there and bacteria is going to grow. But the most important thing with this is if you can't produce energy and you can't activate oxygen and you're producing exhaust, it means that you're bioavailable copper deficient, which means you can't regulate iron. This is huge. This is huge. What this means now is you can't recycle iron. One of the many places you recycle iron in a big place is the gut, the enterocyte. So now the the enzymes in your gut, hafastin, peroxidase, and ferroporin, which are copper dependent, can't recycle iron. It can't go through the enterocyte into your blood. You show anemia, the problem is being stored in the tissue. Why am I telling you this? Because all fungus, all parasites, and all bacteria feed on iron. 
So this recipe that gets you there is stress induced, right? So what do we need to do? It comes down to eating foods in a very strategic way. This is what our RTN restoration diet nutrition approach is all about. How do we eat in a way eating metabolic foods, fruits and roots and, 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 and starches? How do we balance other foods like maybe grains and, and, and um, vegetables to work for us, for us against this? How do we get metabolic proteins like shellfish, fatty fish, white fish, broth, organ meats, you know, different types of meats and dairy, etc., to meet our metabolic needs? But do it strategically, not just eat it. Do it strategically in a way that we decrease the stress response in the system physiologically. We change the environment. We support the environment at the same time with different fat soluble vitamins, different minerals to fill those buckets up to help regulate cell energy production, to help regulate the iron recycling system. So essentially, if you think about it, we start paying off our debt, right? We not only stop the accumulation of debt, but we start paying off our debt. And we do this over time. What happens now is we upregulate thyroid hormone production, gut motility and mobility. We upregulate hydrochloric acid production so we can now control the flux of what's going into the small intestine and what's being absorbed and what's going out and controlling that bacteria. But overall, the most important thing with this, and it's not rocket science, my friend, we get the cell from producing exhaust back to producing energy and that creates the healing environment for SIBO, my friends. Thanks for tuning in. I'm out. Peace.